On Giving Thanks A Sermon for the Holidays by Pastor Manuel Laproig The Turk is ready and waiting, neighbours, and so are the traditional arguments with loved ones around the dinner table. But let's spend a few moments to reflect on the things besides the turkey and the family that we are thankful for. The things that shine on our sunny days that make the rainy ones possible to stand. Let us think of what keeps our worst nightmares at bay. A wise neighbour once said, I value mathematics so highly because it leaves no place for hypocrisy and vagueness. My two worst nightmares. You might think, how are these the worst? I can think of a lot worse than those. But it is so concise and true. Imagine a world where there would be no corner to hold against hypocrisy and vagueness. Where any statement whatsoever could be twisted and turned by those who thrive on such twisting and turning to gain advantage and power over their neighbours, where two plus two would indeed be, as an old Soviet joke put it, whatever the party orders it to be. Imagine a world where no false promises could ever be taken to account, because the lying liars who gave it would fall back to the vagueness of their words every time. This world would be a miserable world, neighbours, a nightmare world. We get a taste of this nightmare every time politics forces its way into places that manage to keep it out. Merit and skill no longer matter. Demagogues get to run the place. Sooner or later, its original creators get thrown out. And then it collapses into mediocrity and pent up unhappiness. Imagine that it would be no tool that would lay better to our hand than to that of our aggressors, that we had nowhere to retreat and nothing to fight them with, that they could not just suborn. Why fight if there's no chance to win, ever, anywhere? Lucky for us, in every age there are things in the world that resist hypocrisy and vagueness, things that create the oasis where we gather and hold. We are doubly lucky because for us mathematics has taken physical form. It has clothed itself in silicon and electricity. And now we can wield it not only amongst ourselves, but also show it to others who need not understand its language, but are content to see its results. To see just how much luckier we are, neighbours, than the geeks of Leonardo da Vinci's time. Just read his resume that is sent to the ruler of Milan to support himself while exploring the niftiness and awesomeness of nature and math. He had few other options than to promise to construct superior war machines. We are damn lucky, neighbours that we can build machines that deliver better privacy rather than better war, if we so choose. No sooner did I write this, neighbours, than the real world, trademark, provided a case study, as if on cue. Toys run by evil scientists in the pay of the government. News are on the clock, only on this website. Ominous geek conspiracy unmasked! Tor, as you already know if you read its about page, was originally funded as a US Navy research project and is still occasionally funded by some clueful parts of the US government that care about people getting news and other info that their governments happen to not approve of. Given that this sermon got to you neighbours by travelling for at least some part of its path along a series of tubes ordered by another US military research agency, it is not surprising that such clues still exists. Let's hope that persists, neighbours, as we sure could use more of it, the way things are generally going in those quarters these days. 
Thanks to this clue, and also the selfless dedication of the tour developers, who made this project go the way few government-funded projects ever do. We have the internet scale equivalent of a Large Hadron Collider for low-latency onion routing. Unlike the LHC, this experiment is not just open to the public, but also immediately useful. Which is where the revelations come in. Ah, evil scientists! Tricking the public. Luckily, Tor is science, and totally open science at that. The best kind that hides nothing. It requires no permission or special access to be attacked, in the only meaningful way that scientific claims are questioned, and the subject matter is improved. By experiment. Indeed, many good neighbours did so, and helped improve it. And you should read their papers, because their work is nifty. And when you hear someone attack open science, not with experiment or calculations, but with FUD about money or attitude, either that someone doesn't know how science works, or has another angle. There is a bar analogy for everything in life. It's a more fun cousin of the car analogy. So here's one for how this hustle works. Imagine that someone is loudly embarrassing himself and annoying neighbours in a bar with a foolish story. Being good neighbours, wouldn't you move to step in? Hey, it's a bar and a good deed. And gently correct him. Except you discover that a bar has a hefty cover charge and the loud silliness is actually quite profitable. That's one bar it's good to pass, neighbours, because it's not in the business of enriching minds with good stories, whilst shearing up the heart with a hefty drink. All it's serving is poisoned Kool-Aid of clickbait. A clickbait purveyor, who happened to read the about section of a Tor website, must have thought he struck a mother load. An evil scientist story with a garish government conspiracy. What a clickbait oil well! The evil scientist trope is like a perpetual motion machine of clickbait. Scientists ain't the most gib and suave communicators to begin with. They tend to become annoyed when bullshit is heaped upon them, letting their annoyance show. This, in turn, is clear proof that they are evil and holding something back. Quick, attack them again. Spare no personal detail, because there are a hundred ways that geeks are geeky. And for each one, there are folks that will be persuaded that geeks can't be trusted because of it. The point of all this noisy commotion, neighbours, is to make the public forget that science and technology are in the business of making things that can be judged on their own, regardless of their creators' or detractors' motives, personalities, employers, or lack thereof or in fact any other circumstances where FUD, vagueness and hypocrisy may be brought to bear. A scientific artefact stands on its own, the same way a formula is either correct or meaningless, regardless of whose hand wrote it. Trying to guess what directed that hand is worse than pointless, if the point is to know if we should put our trust in the artefact. Because good motives don't make good science, and suspecting the scientist of a conspiracy adds precisely zero bits of information and clouds thinking. Over what criteria should one evaluate Tor, then? As one should any engineering artifact, whether it does what it says on the label, whether it does anything not specified on the label, and whether the operating conditions under which it can successfully function are present.
Are the operators of the nodes that make up your Tor circuit actually independent and uncompromised? Or are Sibley attacks an important concern? And from whom? Is there enough mutual information between packets entering and exiting Tor to de-anonymize users? And from what perspective on the network is that information available? In clickbait you will not find these questions asked, much less their answers. Not sure whether an article is clickbait or not? Try suggesting to those responsible for it what questions they could have asked. If the answer is a wave of harassment rather than a follow-up, congratulations, you've found clickbait. Worse, you are in the land of hypocrisy and vagueness. Get out fast. Once we remember that, neighbours, the fud clouds of zero information verbiage dissipate, and a saving light shines through. Technology is not magic that must be judged only by the kind of witches and wizards who create it. Tainted by evil or doom, unbeknownst to mere mortals. It is noble and dissectable, and our predecessors left us the greatest gift of understanding that, and of approaching it just so. If we got any further out from under the shadow of vagueness and hypocrisy, it is all thanks to that legacy and to that principle. So we will walk out of this valley of clickbait and bullshit. And we shall not fear, because they hold no power over us. And for this we are thankful.